Greetings, everyone. I'm excited to be bringing to you some informances and performances of a work called Miracles and Mysteries, which I commissioned almost 20 years ago from lyricist Ken Miedema and composer Bruce Greer. Before I get into it, I'd just like to thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel for the musical theater things I did and for Voice of Love. It was such a wonderful experience to record all those, and if you haven't seen them yet, I encourage you to go back there and look at them. But for now, I want to share with you the story of how this great piece, Miracles and Mysteries, came to be. At a church I was working at, the pastor wanted to do a sermon series based on the miracles that Jesus performed in the book of John. And he said, Ron, wouldn't it be cool if we found somebody to write a song for each miracle and you could sing them in church over the course of seven weeks? And I said, hmm, that's a great idea. I was also thinking about um, a musical vehicle for my own personal ministry that could help me go on the road and, and be ministering in other churches as well. At the time, I was colleagues with Ken Miedema and Bruce Greer, and so I decided to call Bruce and ask him if he would be willing to write the songs. Um, he agreed and he wanted to do it, but he said, Ron, aren't you friends with Ken Miedema? And I said, well, we know each other. We've done a couple of concerts together. He said, I think he would be amazing at writing these songs. I said, well, I don't know. He's so busy and he gives a lot of concerts. And, and I sort of put it out there that I didn't think Ken would, you know, want to take the time to do it. He said, I think you should call him. So I did. Uh, I left a message on his answering machine and I, I sort of apologized all over myself uh, because I had Ken cup, kind of on a pedestal. I had Bruce on a pedestal also, but um, it was just easier to talk to him about it because we had just done a concert together. Um, so I left the message on the machine, talked to Ken about the project, and went away from my desk and did some other work in the church. And when I came back, there was a message from Ken that said, literally, Arden, it's Miedema. Of course I'm going to do this, and I would love to do it. He said, however, I want to just write the lyrics, and I want Bruce Greer to write the music. I thought, hmm, this is going to be interesting. Um, so I called Bruce the next day, and he said, are you kidding me? I'm going to write music for lyrics by Ken Miedema. We all sort of had each other on a pedestal, and we went on a conference call, and Ken said, let's just realize that we all love each other and care about each other and do this project together and stop thinking that one person's better than the other. So that's how it, that's how it came to be. Ken started working on the lyrics and one by one gave the songs to Bruce. He wrote the piano parts for um, the piano and the voice line, and I performed them in church. The very interesting thing at this point is to tell you about Ken and Bruce um, Ken has been blind since birth. He's probably one of the busiest Christian performers that I know. So everything that you hear of Ken's that he's not doing live in concert has been transcribed from concerts by people who work for him at, because Ken performs extemporaneously. He's never written anything down. So he would be writing these lyrics and giving them to Bruce. And that's a really fascinating part of the story for me. Uh, Ken is an amazing lyricist. So Bruce is probably one of the top three or four uh, well-known arrangers in sacred and contemporary Christian music out of Nashville and, and other great cities. He's done a lot of writing of um, original works and he's done arrangement for choir and for piano. He's a pianist by background, a very fine, fine pianist, classically trained. So I have these two really giants of guys that are gonna put this whole thing together. So I did the seven songs in worship uh, with the idea that Bruce would eventually orchestrate them and we would make a recording. And then I would be able to take that on the road, perform it either with the tracks or with my wife playing piano, however it would go down. Before the recording happened, Cynthia and I did the songs, just the seven pieces, about the seven miracles in people's homes and various churches to kind of get some feedback. And everybody resonated with this same thought. The songs are so dense and so intense lyrically and musically that you almost need a breather. So I shared some of that with Bruce, who immediately got it. He said, you know, I've been thinking the same thing. So he wrote four amazing interludes for violin and viola unaccompanied that happen in between some of the songs that take snippets of the melody from the previous song sung and give a little bit of a snippet of the song that's to come and weaves them together over the course of about a minute and a half. They're just wonderful. Then 
I talked to Ken and I said, what are we gonna call this piece? And he said, I've been thinking about that. And he said, how do you feel about miracles and mysteries? I said, hmm, I love that because all three of us are, while we're uh, men of deep faith, we're also mystic. We, we know that there's a lot about God and a lot about Jesus' life that we can't answer, that we, we can't get our, our mind around. So I love the idea of putting the word mystery in there. And Ken said, I think the piece could also use an introductory song and an ending song. So he wrote what he called um, a miracle hymn prologue and a miracle hymn epilogue. You get to hear all of those um, in the, next, the weeks to come. So that was the beginning of the piece sort of mushrooming into something much larger than we had originally conceived. So we recorded the orchestra parts in two days. I remember Bruce being there. I, I had him come up and play the piano for the recording sessions. And um, he was talking to my recording engineer afterwards before we went to dinner. And he said, you know, Dan, this is probably one of the three or four top things I have done with my life. He said, this just is a miracle in itself. And I know that Ken really is proud of what we did. So there's an introduction, the seven songs, the interludes, and then uh, some exit music, as I mentioned before. All of these, I'm going to start with you with this introduction. And then week by week on Wednesday, through Lent, I'll be sharing the opening, the seven songs, and the closing. Um, I picked the Lenten season because I think it's really great to focus on the life of Christ, his miraculous life, what he did, and how people reacted to it. In the seven songs, you're going to hear Ken as lyricist talk directly about what's happening when Jesus is performing the miracle. And then sometimes you'll hear somebody else talking. Some of the songs have other voices in them. Some are just a narrator. Some are Ken's idea maybe of what Jesus was really thinking when he performed the miracle. As I studied the scriptures and listened to the songs again, getting ready for today's recording of the informances, it's remarkable to me to remember that Jesus didn't just perform miracles when people asked him. Sometimes he did, and sometimes he did it very reluctantly. In fact, one time, as I'll share with you when we do this song, Jesus says to people that are there, you won't believe in me unless I show you a sign. So because you don't believe, I will show you this sign, and he performs a miracle. Um, I think people were challenging him, and he didn't necessarily like that. And then the songs also are extremely sometimes fun and bombastic and celebratory because of the miracle happening. And sometimes they are a longing prayer for relief and for hope. And sometimes they are an unanswered question. And it, the song leaves you um, pondering what might really have happened in that moment. So I hope that you will enjoy these. Um, they're scored for, as I said, solo voice, piano, and then solo voice and orchestra. In the process of doing the CD release, um, another thing I wanted to share with you as I tell the story about how the piece happened was um, I reached out to my alma mater, Butler University, and I said, hey, I'm doing this CD release and just wanted to let the Alumni Association know. And so they shared it with the music department. And lo and behold, Eric Stark, who's the head of choral activities there, heard about it and showed up and surprised me. I was shocked. And after the concert was over, um, went up to him and, and uh, we embraced. And he said, Ron, I want to do this at Butler with an orchestra. And he said, I also hear some choir parts. I, first of all, I was flabbergasted. And I said, why would you do something that that's, has so much of a theatrical contemporary feel? And he goes, we do sacred music all the time with the chorus. And uh, I said, okay, I'm up, I'm up for it. I took his idea about the chorus to Bruce and Bruce said, it was, it, it was like all of us were thinking the same thing. He said, I hear some chorus too. So on four of the songs, there's a chorus that sings with me on the refrains of the songs and it adds some more spice to Miracles and Mystery that's really cool. And then as we did the piece more, I felt that it was um, important for people to understand the actual scriptural context. So I picked the scripture text for each miracle and have invited people at concerts to express that text. Now, you're not going to hear those in the informances and performances on this series, but um, eventually uh, we'll put the whole concert on my YouTube channel and you can listen to it. 
That brings us to the Moody Church. I'm so grateful for Tim Stafford, the head of worship here, and for the musical saints that do uh, worship here and, and share their gifts. And I shared the disc with Tim and I said, wouldn't it be great for us to do this together with you conducting? And he said, I love the music. I said, well, let's call, I'll call Bruce Greer and we'll have him come in and play piano and we'll together look for an orchestra um, and uh, you can look for the singers. And that's what you're going to hear. It is a wonderful video recording and thanks to the tech staff here for all the work that they did on that. That was on Palm Sunday a couple of years ago. So thanks so much for tuning in. I think you're gonna be blown away by the passion and articulate, almost Soundheim-like textual writing that Ken does with this piece. And then Bruce's music is stunning. It, you'd be hard pressed to guess that Bruce wrote the accompaniments for each song because they so fit each particular miracle that they sound different from each other. There's some jazz, there's sweeping ballad orchestral stuff, there's pointillistic um, celebration and, and everything in between and all kinds of special instruments used for special effects. So I think that you will very much enjoy it. I have published the songs. If you want to reach out to me and get a copy of the music, that's totally possible. But for now, join me on Wednesday nights for Miracles and Mysteries by Ken Miedema and Bruce Greer, conducted by Tim Stafford, performed by myself, and a wonderful array of singers and instrumentalists. Thank you. <laughs>